Hi, this is Caleb Gain, and you're watching King Course World Series. Unit 9 of AP World History begins to look at the modern world, and specifically a world within the context of globalization, a world that's more connected than what we've ever seen before. And one of those things is unprecedented amounts of technology on a, on a level we've never seen before. The capabilities of what people can do with man-made objects is incredible. Now, are you guys even listening to me? What? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Clash of Clans, you know how it is, right, bro? No, I don't get it, bro. But I do know that you've obviously grown up in an age with an unparalleled amount of technology in your hand, so much so that you can't really go in my class without having your phone in your hand. But that's what we're gonna unpack today, starting in Unit 9 of AP World History, is the fact that now humans have an unprecedented access to technology. We went from humans in the 1800s not necessarily even knowing how to read to now everyone today walks around with a personal computer in their pocket. It's an unreal change, but there's reasons why that happens, and of course there's effects that happen to this new unprecedented amount of technological growth. History shows us that humans are inherently lazy and inherently stupid, and it's because of those two things that humans have always been pursuing technology. Things that make life easier, and there's three main reasons where humans have always looked for that. It's communication, transportation, and medicine. And those are the three things we're gonna unpack today because all three of those have intense technological booms within the 1900s that will dramatically change life forever. The most dramatic changes in communication we see definitely start during the Industrial Revolution when three different inventions come out that make communication so much easier than it had, had ever been. Remember, in the past, the best way to talk to somebody was to do it face-to-face -face or send a letter, and that just took forever. And during the Industrial Revolution, obviously, we have changes in communication that has made that easier from a transportation standpoint, but there's also three inventions that make it much easier. In 1876, Alexander Graham Bell invented the first telephone, which allowed somebody to have a conversation with somebody else from a large distance. Now, of course, phones were based on whether or not you had telephone pole access and were limited by wires. And Western Union in the United States had set up enough by the 1930s that almost everyone had a telephone in home. However, telephones could not match up with problems by talking overseas. But the solution to this lied within Marconi's radio, which had been invented by 1896 and had commercial use throughout World War I and World War II and expanded throughout the 1920s and 30s using radio waves to send sound. This was revolutionary because now you could communicate with people around the world because it was not based on whether or not you had wires attaching the literal points of connection. The power of the telephone and the radio would first be combined in 1973 by Motorola and by the 1990s, cell towers have emerged as a way to replace radio waves. And by beaming those signals throughout the world, you can now talk with anybody worldwide, assuming they have connection to that cell tower. Now, of course, cell phones continue to evolve into the wonderful, fashionable flip phones, which I take pride in having back in high school. But it was thanks to the internet that cell phones really evolved into what they are today. There's many debates about who actually invented the internet, but we do know that by 1990, the World Wide Web, or WW Dot, that search engine system was officially invented. And that changes the game completely because now you can connect with anyone around the world and you also have the ability to find information at the speed of a fingertip. It's so much easier than communication was, say, at the start of the Industrial Revolution. Of course, the advent of cell phones, whether it's iPhone or Google or Android, shows us now the connection of cell power with the internet as well, making essentially mini computers available in people's pockets. These changes in technology, especially communication technology, definitely make the world feel smaller. So when we talk about globalization, this interconnected world, the first way to connect the world is to allow people around the world to talk to each other. And thanks to where we've gotten all the way to now with cell phones and the internet, that is possible. The other way to make the world feel smaller and more connected is through transportation, allowing people to actually travel to different parts of the world. And again, the Industrial Revolution starts us off on an unparalleled level of travel that we haven't had before, making the world more accessible. For thousands of years, humans had either walked or had used animal power to travel, but that stopped in the Industrial Revolution when Carl Benz invented the first horseless carriage. Yes, that's the same as Mercedes-Benz. But this was taken a step further when Henry Ford invented the Model T, which was so reliant on the assembly line that he could produce a new Model T every 24 seconds, making this way more available to people around the world. The car was the first major game changer in the transportation side of things because it not only took away the need for humans to do work themselves or for animals to do it, but it made transportation way more accessible. To have 
a piece of technology that transported you from place to place was a brand new luxury that was now becoming more affordable because of the advancements of the Industrial Revolution. But before the Industrial Revolution, humans had only traveled by land or by sea. It's during the Industrial Revolution that the barrier of the sky is taken down. And now, through the Wright brothers' invention of the airplane, humans are able to conquer the skies. Flight and the ability to fly has always represented freedom for humans. It's something that people have never really had. And so often we see that for characters in movies and stories, that flight represents an escape. Think about Anakin or Luke Skywalker in Star Wars. The fact that they were pilots gave them that chance at, at adventure. Or when Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone gets access to his flying broomstick, suddenly he can go places he never had before. That's exactly what flight does for humans during the Industrial Revolution and from then on. It now makes the entire world accessible. And we're no longer limited in where we can travel. It becomes very easy for people to go to places they've never been. Flight truly is what makes the world now globalized. It allows connection throughout the world. And now anyone anywhere can get anywhere in the world. There are no more barriers. And quickly, during the 1960s and 70s, flight becomes a part of culture, becomes a part of business. It is expected that you travel. Once again, showing how transportation has completely changed life. But unfortunately, one can't just get in a car and go to the destination or get in a plane and end up halfway across the world. You need fuel to make that happen, which brings about a whole new industry that humans never thought of within how we get fuel to make our machines, to make our transportation actually function. Russia is one of the first countries to realize how much profit is available from oil. And it turns out that all that boring snow frozen land that Russia had accumulated way back in the 1500s was actually worth something because it was standing on a ton of oil. And by 1876, Russia will launch the world's first oil tanker and will produce over half of the world's oil. By the 1930s, oil companies will be some of the most profitable businesses in the world because of the demand to fuel transportation around the world. Companies like Exxon, Texas, Chevron, Shell will be some of the most powerful in the world. Western countries realize very quickly that they don't have enough oil naturally to keep up with the demand of the increasing technologies worldwide. Because of that, many of them turn their attention to the Middle East, a place that is rich in oil. A great example of this is Great Britain, who incites the Arab revolt during World War I for the purpose of oil. And from the rest of history, European countries will be invading the Middle East to try and gain hold of vital oil. This is why Middle Eastern leaders like Gamal Nasser of Egypt will nationalize oil fields and try to take control of this very important resource to make it big. It's also why many countries will join OPEC, an organization of the leading oil producing countries around the world that try to keep their resources to themselves and jack up prices for those that are trying to buy it in Western countries. Transportation have obviously better connected the world, but because of the demand for the resources of oil to run these machines, our world is even more connected than I ever thought it would be before. Of course, the transportation industry and the energy industry have had their share of problems, too. Take, for example, the pursuit of nuclear energy. Ever since World War II and the dropping of the atomic bomb, countries have been looking at how they can sustain themselves using nuclear power. But disasters like that at Chernobyl and Three Mile Island in the United States have proven that nuclear power probably is not the route to go. A third area in which we see intense technological change is in the medical field. Again, humans have always been trying to find ways to heal themselves and prevent themselves from disease. That's actual human nature. We want to live longer, and the technology of the 20th century allows us to do so. Starting with penicillin in the 1920s, there have been so many diseases that have been almost completely eradicated because of technology. Ever since developments of pasteurization in the 1800s, we've seen Tons of different diseases that have been eradicated, including tetanus and polio and mumps and measles, diseases you can still get, but we have cures for them. Alexander Fleming's penicillin is a game changer with this in the 1920s, and by 1940, these types of medicines will be mass produced for the public by drug companies. Because of modern medicine, we as humans now can live longer and we get ailments, most likely we're cured. However, medicine also shows us that there's some serious changes that have gone on with pop culture and with lifestyle choices. Think about how medicines have changed the way people live. For example, medicine has allowed people to participate in more extramarital sexual activity than ever before because of the creation of condoms and contraceptive, as well as the monumental decision in 1973 of Roe v. Wade, which allowed abortion in the United States. As humans are living longer and longer and the population grows, there's a higher demand for food, which is going to turn individuals toward commercial agriculture, where farms are now owned by businesses, not individuals. This will also lead to genetic engineering, which allows us to produce foods faster and in some cases even more nutritious. One could argue that through communication, transportation, and medicine, the world has changed more in 100 years from 1900 to 2000 than it has changed in 
all of world history. And it's definitely made a world that's more connected and it's made a world in which you would get to live longer and technically more comfortable. But the question remains, is the world better now than it was before? Because with all of these changes, we have created a greater reliance on technology than we've ever had before. Humans are not necessarily self-sustained anymore. They need technology to survive, or at least that's how we feel. And so while I may poke fun at a student who uses a cell phone in my classroom, it's becoming more and more clear that maybe the use of that technology is exactly what keeps us as humans going. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.